Now, the effects of the solar eclipse, of course, as it moves across the country on humans is well documented. You know, we all get grouchy for a minute or two when it gets dark out at 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> but let's zero in on what it does to animals. Our Stacey DeFord is live at the Cranbrook Institute of Science. Hi, Stacey. What can you tell us from there? Well, it is getting very busy here. This is my new friend, Lena. She's in the fourth grade, and she had the opportunity to get out of school early to come see the eclipse, so she took full advantage. What are you hoping to see? Uh, I'm hoping to see um, a really cool eclipse because I've never seen one before. This is my first time. Okay, and you looked through one of the telescopes. The Warren Astronomy Club is out here, and they're, they're letting people look through the telescopes. They've got the proper filters on them. What did you think about that? It looks really cool because um, they told me something that I never knew that could happen with um, the sun to where the point, um, the little black spots on them, if you look at the, through the telescope, um, those are the little cooling spots on them. And I did not know that the sun could cool. I did not know that at all. So you're learning a lot today. Yes. And you have something to teach us. Now, Lena has a little hack if you don't, if your glasses aren't staying on your face. What did you wear to keep them on? So today I wore this, like, thing on my head. I don't know what the name is. It's a headband. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's what I would call it. And basically, I put the um, glasses ends in there, and then I like sh put it on, and then I can leave them on without any thing. Shake your head. Show us. Show us they're going to stay on. So, okay. So, you're going to be good. You're going to be safe. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check back in with you after the eclipse to see what you thought. How's that sound? Good. Okay. So, we're not going to see total... Uh, totality here. However, in Toledo, they are. All the people there and the animals. A couple days ago, I got to speak with the Toledo Zoo about an incredible program they're doing during the eclipse today, and we can all participate in it. So I'd like to thank Beth Posta, the curator of behavioral husbandry and well-being from the Toledo Zoo, for joining us today. We're so excited to hear what you're planning for the total eclipse. We've all seen over the last couple of weeks, things flying around next door and Facebook. Don't let your dog look at the sun, close yeah. your blinds. Are animals really at risk of being in danger during an eclipse? We're not really concerned about that. They typically don't look up at the sun in the first place. So I wouldn't expect that they would do that. So I, I think they're, they may look around and wonder why it's getting so dark. Are there any behaviors, because it is going to get dark at a different time, are there any behaviors that you are expecting to see? We're not exactly sure what to expect. I think there's gonna be a variety of animal responses throughout the zoo. I think some of the animals are going to see it, the, it's starting to get dark and maybe start with their normal evening routine. So they may start walking toward the doors where they go in for the night or for some of the birds, they may start roosting. For our reptiles and amphibians, the animals that may go under into caves or underground, they may start doing some of those behaviors. It's also possible that they just won't understand what's going on and we'll see some behaviors that are indicative of some kind of threat within their environment. Or it's possible that we won't see any reaction at all. That just won't matter to them. It's just not important. We might also see some new behaviors that we're not expecting and that we haven't seen before. We have some data from previous eclipses, but it's, it's, it's pretty minimal because it doesn't happen all that often. Tell us about the live stream that you're doing and how you are um, asking or, or letting guests participate in this. We have a citizen science program that will be ongoing where visitors in the zoo can come to a number of exhibits and scan a QR code and collect data right there with us where we will have an ethogram or a list of behaviors that we're looking at with our animals and every 15 seconds they can put on their phone or their device, they can check a box of what behavior they're seeing with that particular animal over the course of the eclipse. And uh, I think we're doing three, three minute observations at a time. So for three minutes, every 15 seconds, they can record their observation. And then if folks are from watching from home, we will start live streaming a number of exhibits starting at 1 p.m. My team will also be collecting data the days leading up to the eclipse, the day of, and then the days after to see how a, a number of animals respond. So tell us what animals are going to be part of the live streams that, that people can watch and, and note the behavior of. 
We will have live stream cameras in our Arctic encounter. So the polar bears will be visible and the sea lions. We'll also have live stream at our uh, brown bear exhibit through uh, Tiger Terrace through some of our carnivore areas. So people will be able to watch some of our carnivores. And I believe also our uh, vulture and ibis exhibit. So we can observe some of the birds as well. So three different areas of the zoo where people are able to kind of follow along. To participate in the observations, visit ToledoZoo.org. For CBS Detroit, I'm Stacy DeFord. Okay, lots of excitement going on here, you guys. I'm throwing it back to you in the studio. We'll check back later. All right, thanks, Stacy. Yeah, we'll definitely check in again soon. It's getting busy there. Now. Someone's is someone looking through an Amazon box. What is I that? So. I, I, I just love all these sort of makeshift viewing it's devices. I guess you could say. All right, thanks so much, Stacy. And the spectacle spectacle of the eclipse may be visually pleasing, but you may want to be aware of your other senses too. Yeah, absolutely. Namely, your sense of hearing. Strange things can happen during the eclipse, especially when it comes to those animals. Our own Karen Carter finds out how different research is being done to study those impacts from the solar eclipse. Hey, Karen. Hey there, yeah. So we just heard from Stacy about some of the things that the Toledo Zoo is going to be doing, but now we are going to hear from uh, one professor who is also a researcher who is going to talk about some of the research that is being done on animals and some of the difference from the previous eclipse that we've had to this one today. Many of us will put on our special solar glasses to get a glimpse of the solar eclipse. But while your eyes are feasting on the amazing sight before you, perk your ears up too. Animals such as birds and insects will be reacting to changes in their environment. Dr. Andrew Farnsworth of Cornell's Lab of Ornithology says animals are very perceptive to even the smallest changes of their environment. These changes are going to be seen during the eclipse. It does not take much time on the order of certainly minutes to start seeing animals behave in different ways. So how will the animals react to the eclipse? Birds in particular respond very quickly to changing light levels. Insects respond very quickly to changing temperature and obviously changing wind conditions. As soon as it begins and the light starts to dim, you're going to see animals start behaving in interesting ways. There are a few things that scientists are going to look for during the eclipse, especially this year compared to the eclipse in August of 2017. Are we going to see the initiation of that kind of nocturnal activity because birds are more motivated to migrate during this April eclipse? Additionally, we're interested in thinking about the northern areas of the United States because during those very cold or perhaps snowy conditions, insects and bats will be a non-issue in terms of the biological activity that's in the atmosphere. So we can really focus our attention on what birds are doing, for example. And they're using weather radar to do it. So we can use the radar to really quantify or enumerate what's happening in the atmosphere in terms of that biological activity. Now that's the science of weather. For CBS News Detroit, I'm meteorologist Karen Carter. Okay, that's so pretty interesting. Neat. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole it? different take, a different view on it. Yeah, I kind of thought it was interesting too that they're using <laughs> weather radar, which yeah. you know, to just see how some of the birds are reacting in, in the area and that too. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see what they find out from, from today's eclipse. And I guess listen out for that silence is, yeah. is, oh, what, yeah. is what they say. Birds just stop chirping all together, making sounds all together. I'd like yeah. to sleep in a little they're, bit in the morning. Why couldn't it have been at like they, 7 a.m.? <laughs> yeah, they there you go. Time in the middle Fine. of the day nap. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much, Karen, Thanks, for that. Guys. And we're continuing our coverage of this planetary phenomenon with a look at your eye health. Can you recover from directly looking at the sun? An expert is on standby. We'll hear from them coming right up.
Welcome back. Maybe you're feeling tempted and wondering what would happen if you look at the sun with your naked eye. Could you recover? Yeah, well, we have an expert optometrist here in studio with us. This is Dr. Paul Kimbrough. He's the director of clinical services at Southfield Supervision Center. Thanks for joining us, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. So uh, to answer the question, what happens if you look directly at an eclipse? Yeah. I think a lot of people are tempted. Just the basic bottom line question. I mean, it's the main thing. Yeah, so the main concern is when you're staring at the sun, even with a partial eclipse, the radiant energy of the sun can actually burn the back of the retina. We call that solar retinopathy, which can ultimately result in loss of central vision, distorted vision, loss of colored vision. So to your point, don't do it unless you have the approved eclipse viewers on or the solar viewers. Yeah, I must say I'm a little bit nervous. I know uh, my preschooler, she's three and a half, yep. they're doing a viewing um, with with the glasses, mm -hmm. but at that age, I mean, you also have little kids. You're like, can you really make them? Not I know. Look with, it it keep goes kind of yeah. It goes hand in hand with you know, they, you want them to be able to see it, but keeping a piece of cardboard on their face is tricky. So if yeah. you have a quick glance up there, what happens with just you know a quick glance before you go? No, 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 don't do that. Yeah. Right. So the reality is, to your point, kids are probably going to unfortunately peak. We do know from studies that you probably have to be staring at the eclipse for longer durations than just a split second. But it's better to be safe than sorry. We want to stay on top of young children and adults, making sure we're not staring without proper eclipse glasses on. Gotcha. And what about sunglasses? Because a lot of folks I've heard yeah. this morning are like, well, I have some really dark, good sunglasses. Yeah, it's a great question. We got that in our clinic this morning. Even the dilation shades that we give to patients, patients are asking if they can wear those. The answer, unfortunately, is no. The only thing that's actually approved to prevent uh, the, the harmful damage of solar retinopathy is the approved eclipse glasses. Sunglasses won't do it. Those dilation shades we give out won't do it either. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, kind of on that topic, just to even go along with that, yeah. you have different sunglasses that people wear all the way through the year from the cheap ones they grab out of a claw machine or to the you know big expensive ones whatever they might be sure you know we get in we're getting into the summer months and today is a really bright day so even before we get to the eclipse when they're using those special glasses to look at it you're sitting outside on a bright sunny day just like this what is the big importance that somebody needs to know when it comes to their sunglasses because if they're just out there on a sunny day like this they could be getting damaged too at the same time. Yeah and to your point in Michigan even in the winter with snow reflecting bright light we have UV exposure all year long and so UVA, UVB blocking sunglasses polarized is great adds to the quality of the image that you're going to get but as long as your sunglasses are UVA, UVB you're going to protect yourself from the sun and protect yourself from cataract formation, macular degeneration, all the things that we know are associated with long-term UV exposure. So if, I mean, some of them, like the really cheap ones, they, they have like UV, like they only have one of them labeled. So if you only have one protected, I mean, does that still put you at risk or what, what goes along with only having one of those covered? Well, it's certainly better than nothing to your point, but the different uh, UVAs will, or UVA and UVB will penetrate different areas of the eye. So it's better to have both if you can spend a little extra money to have both when you can. Mm -hmm. Now what about folks who wear just glasses on a day to day and were to, to glimpse up and, and just uh, like about an hour <laughs> now, I'm still in this eclipse. I know. Is it even more dangerous yeah. to look through a, a glasses lens? I mean, we are, we are just trying to warn folks this yeah. is what you shouldn't be doing. Well, agreed. And I think today's such an amazing experience. We want people to be able to view the eclipse, but to do it safely. Uh, your prescription sunglasses are not enough. You can put eclipse glasses over your sun, uh, prescription eyeglasses, but they're not enough to view the eclipse for any duration of time. Mm -hmm. And for folks who um, have difficulty seeing, um, are there ways for them to, to safely see this as well? I mean, would it be those, the same glasses? Yeah, so exactly. Uh, your prescription eyeglasses are going to be the place to start. Um, and then from there, of course, we've seen today people have the opportunity to use pinhole projectors. That's a great way to view it. Um, but always starting with your prescription sunglasses and then looking directly at the eclipse, putting uh, eclipse glasses over top or a solar viewer would be the way to do it. So if somebody looked for too long, yeah. you know, is this lasting damage or is there, or is this something where, you know, maybe depending on age, somebody mm -hmm. over time that can be regenerated? What, what happens then? So unfortunately, no. Uh, if you were to stare at the eclipse today, especially um, for a long duration of time and, and have a diagnosis of solar retinopathy, it can dramatically change your central vision permanently. So we, we expect you know, that if you're 20, 20 and you stare at the eclipse and have solar retinopathy, your vision could, could drop to somewhere to 20, 40, even 20, 50. And that's not reversible, unfortunately, which is why we're educating people today. So that's, I mean, 
be well beyond any type of knowledge that I've got for that. So when you're talking about obviously the, the big decrease from harm from the sun then, yeah. is this something where, you know, you had TVs in the past that had a little burn in, or you're looking around and you see dots if you look at the sun or it's too bright, right? Is that something where you get that or does it just decrease your vision or are you stuck with seeing like, you know, sparks and everything in your eyes for a while? No, so you would just expect a decrease in the clarity of a patient's central vision. Um, maybe even distorted vision, kind of wavy vision, altered color perception would be something that could be long standing after a solar retinopathy event. Um, so yeah, I think that. Okay. So folks who are feeling, uh, who are experiencing these symptoms, um, what should they do? They should go to their, to their eye doctor? Yes, please. Uh, if in the hours or days after the eclipse, you're feeling like you've lost central vision, distortion of vision, loss of color perception, you're seeing a white spot in the center of vision, please make an appointment with an eye doctor, uh, an optometrist or ophthalmologist. We have lots of resources, Henry Ford Optimize um, have partners with us to be able to allow for annual eye exams. So please uh, schedule an appointment and, and at least have it looked at. Yeah, and be safe, right? I mean, this yes. is just the most important thing. I know it's tempting to take a oh, yeah. gander up uh, <laughs> in the sky, <laughs> but go, oh, hey. not worth it. You no. know, you, you very clearly laid out today what just the really scary effects that can happen. Permanent damage can happen to your vision. Yep. Absolutely, yeah, and that's concerning. and that's why we've got Troy out there too today to be able to tell, talk about different ways that people can deal yeah, with that. Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, just like how does this work? I, I'm, I'm looking at people looking through boxes. So that's the thing, using a box like this, I mean you still get a really bright spot in there and Troy's walking you through the steps as well. I don't want to steal it completely from him, but uh, I mean that bright spot that's reflected off of just a white piece of paper in there, is that still safe or should somebody still be no, very safe. So okay. that's a perfect uh, substitute for if you don't have eclipse glasses today and you can you can make one of those, that's a way to view it very safely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I do have a pair of eclipse glasses here, hey, actually. Hey. All right. <laughs> and I was, I was struck because they're so dark. I mean, we are in a really bright TV studio and with really bright lights, and it's hard to even see those. So it's, I mean, these are really, really heavy duty. But um, anyway. Hopefully everyone out there <laughs> viewing, I know that was pointless. Um, Cooler than sunglasses though. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Paul Kimber, yeah, for welcome. joining you. us today and for explaining what can happen if you Thanks for being long. here. Thanks for having me.